Hi, I'm Dr. Edgar Campos from Mexicali Bariatric Center. One of the questions that we have very common is about duodenal switch or DS. What is the DS? What are the side effects of the DS? Is the DS a very, very risky surgery? If the symptoms of the DS are very uncomfortable? So I think it's very important to talk about the normal intestinal tract and the normal stomach, and then we can know about the DS. So the gastric sleep surgery, that is the mainly one of the first part of the DS, was born as basically as part of the DS long time ago. DS is not a new surgery, it's something that we have been doing for many, many years. A laparoscopic DS came in the past 15, 20 years, and it's easier on recovery and more safer. So every time the procedure it gets safer and safer, we have new technologies. We have a full stomach and the stomach, the basic capacity of the stomach can be around one liter, 1.5 liters. And then we have the pyloric valve that is a valve that separates the stomach from the duodenum. The duodenum is the first part of the intestine. It's a very soft tissue. And the thing about the duodenum is it's, it's very close to some structures. It's very close to the liver, it's very close to the bile ducts, it's very close to the pancreatic ducts, it's very close from all the vessels that supply blood to the intestine, to the pancreas, to the liver, to the gallbladder. So hence, that section that we need to separate from the stomach, it's basically full of anatomic regions that we need to take care. That's why it's a little bit more tricky or a little bit more complicated to dissect all the tissues and avoid to make damage to, to other tissues. So the next part, the, the intestine or the duodenum, it's like a C that basically we can divide them four portions. The first portion, it's connected to the stomach. The second portion is that the one that will connect to the, the pancreas and the bile so we can have the ducts down there. And then the third and the fourth portion is connected to the rest of the intestine. And then it begins the trade angle. And then we have the jejunum and the ileum. And then it connects to the large colon. So basically, each section of the body or the intestine will absorb something. So the first section of the duodenal switch is creating a gastric sleeve. For that, we need to use a boogie. The boogie will help us to create the stomach that will be all the way on the same size, small enough that you will be able to eat, but small enough that you'll have restriction. So mainly the part of the surgery will begin with restriction. That means I can eat less quantity of food. How much will you be able to eat? 100, 150 cc's, very small stomach. Something very important is we need to preserve the pylorus. The pylorus is the bulb that separates the stomach from the intestine. That means that the food will sit on the stomach and then it will empty on the pylorus and then it will go to the intestine. Why is it so important? Because if we don't keep the pylorus, the food will be just dripping down and going very fast to the intestine. So the risk of having dumping syndrome is higher. And then the fullness sensation will stop. Basically, you'll never get full because the, the food will be just flowing and flowing to the intestine without having restriction. So what we do is we normally do a proper gastric sleep. We staple and cut the stomach and over suture that staple line so we can leave the stomach as a single pouch. Then the next step is we need to measure the full intestine. If we're having a duodenal switch, we have either two different methods. It's measuring the full intestine and then going with the HES method. But sometimes the HES method is very aggressive with the malabsorption. So what we do is we go with a common channel of 100 centimeters and then we modify the HES method. That means the biliopancreatic limb, from now on we'll familiarize ourselves with this term. Biliopancreatic means the limb that will receive the bile and the pancreatic juices. That one is not gonna receive any food because we already separate that. And the other one that will receive the food, it will be alimentary limb. 
So we need to measure that and we need to leave the biliopancreatic limb and we staple and cut the intestine. And then that part that needs to be attached, we staple and cut the duodenum. If we have something like a C and the first section we cut it down, basically we'll be separating the stomach and the first part of the duodenum from the rest of the intestinal tract. So we need to reattach it. So the food will come to the stomach and then it will go to the first portion of the duodenum and then we'll go to the alimentary limb. The alimentary limb normally it's from the colon, 100 centimeters, we attach the biliopancreatic limb and then around 200, 250, 400, depends on the length of the intestine, we can attach it to the first portion of the duodenum. I'm gonna show you some images on the, on the, the video so you can get better understanding of the anatomy and how it will be changed. So what happened with the food? The food will go through the stomach and then will pass on the first portion of the duodenum and then instead of going to the jejunum, will go to the ileum that is the distal part of the intestine. That distal part of the intestine basically absorbs some little fat, absorbs little proteins, and absorb little carbs. So basically, the portion that we're bypassing or that we're not connecting, that we call biliopancreatic limb, and the second part that we'll call the common channel is the one that we'll begin absorbing. So once we have the connections, the food will go through the intestine, and then it will begin absorbing on the last portion where the biliopancreatic limbs attach to the the alimentary limb that we call the common channel. So basically you will have just 100 centimeters of absorption. What happened with the food? It doesn't absorb. But unfortunately, that section absorbed calcium, zinc, molybdenum, magnesium, some fats, carbs, protein, amino acids, vitamin A, D, E, K, iron, so basically, we have malabsorption of the bad stuff, but we have malabsorption of the good stuff as well. That's why so many patients that they skip the vitamins after the duodenal switch, they begin with nutritional deficiency in the long run. Most of the time, we don't have as bad cases of nutritional deficiencies because our patients take a lot of vitamins, they take supplements, they take protein, and the diet needs to be very, very healthy. So if you're having a restrictive procedure as a gastric sleep, and then you're having a very malabsorptive procedure as a duodenal switch, you don't have room to mess around with your meals. You need to be very square, and you need to focus about protein and good vegetables and nutrition. Most of the cases basically begin when they skip the nutrition. So the duodenal switch is the most malabsorptive surgery, it's basically the restrictive surgery and is a very, very well uh, suited surgery for diabetic, for high blood pressure patients, for metabolic patients. So we have a very, very good surgery. And right now we don't have as many complications as we can expect with a weight loss surgery, with especially with a duodenal switch. So the duodenal switch is basically a mixed surgery that you still have the restriction with the, with the pylorus instead of a, a mixed surgery that you don't have the restriction like the bypass. And we have a very, very long malabsorption. So I think gastric uh, bypass versus a gastric uh, a duodenal switch, uh, it's, it's one of the questions that we get more often. And the, the, basically, the, the answer is quite simple. Uh, the first one, you don't have restriction as, as a big pouch with the, the, the pylorus and the gastric emptiness. And the other one is the malabsorption. You have more malabsorption with the duodenal switch than with the gastric bypass. Both of the surgery, you need to reroute the intestine. Both of the surgery still have the risk of uh, internal hernias. Both of the surgery are done laparoscopic. Both of the surgery, they have some part of restriction and then some part of malabsorption. But the difference will be basically on the quantity of malabsorption and the fullness sensation of the restriction with the gastric sleeve. Thank you.